What's going on guys, Triple G Beast here, the director, lead writer, also known as the voice for Jake, James, Kurt, Zombies, many others, and I'm joined by my good friend Colin. Hey, how are you doing everyone? So as you guys know, uh, he is the uh, official voice actor for Carter, executive producer, uh, co-writer, and co-filmer, I guess you could say. And so we wanted to make this video because we've been getting a ton, ton of questions thrown away about just zombie attack in general. I received a ton of tweets, messages, comments when I announced that we're making this video. So there are a lot of questions that I received and I do want to thank you guys for taking the time to send those our way. However, due to how many that I received, and I was not expecting to receive this many, just so you guys know that we're not going to be answering every single question we got because this video will be like five hours long. So if you guys uh, did ask a question and we don't answer it, please don't feel discouraged or anything. Just know that there were a lot of questions that I got, and we try to pick some of the ones that we think are probably the best ones that we've got that we feel that should be answered the most. And so. Why don't we just go ahead and uh, get right into it? So I'll just go ahead and ask my uh, first question here that I received. So this is from user It's Just PJ. This person asked, "Were there any story inspirations from movies, TV shows, anime, or video games that you used for Zombie Tag series?" Very, very damn good question. So the short answer is yes. There's quite a bit of references that I you guys may have uh, seen throughout the series but just to name a few I won't be able to name them all but I'm sure a lot of you guys will be able to pick them up so for movies yeah quite a few if you look at uh, like sometimes I'll reference uh, things like Star Wars uh, Resident Evil films um, sometimes um, I'm trying to think of what else because there's so many yeah to this day to this day we still like reference movies and or see some piece of dialogue or some scene in a film that inspires shit that happens in ZAR like to this day you know it's hard to list all of them would be it like you said it'd be another five hours probably trying to list all the movie inspirations I mean the one that that can be answered like right off the bat for anime is is definitely Dragon Ball Z during the early days of ZAS and some of ZAL. Well, it still kind of continues on though doesn't it because uh, if you look at some certain it does, aspects but it's not so much like you know power up yeah like, it's not so much like auras and stuff you know it's mostly just like a mild glow and things but the concept is still the same very very true video games absolutely uh, the Resident Evil games, uh, mainly some plot elements from those games, uh, the Left 4 Dead games a little bit, but uh, definitely one I've actually uh, used quite a bit, which I'm sure many people have already picked up on, is I really like the story behind uh, the Jack and Daxter series. Uh, so specifically the part in uh, Jack 3 where uh, Jack's father dies right in front of him and he doesn't realize it was his father until his father's already dead. So I use that for the uh, Jake and Carter uh, brotherhood uh, relationship. I thought that'd be like a very like dramatic thing to place in. Um, and of course we have the uh, the peacemaker suits in the series which I also got from the Jack and Daxter games because that's one of the primary weapons you get in the game. It's, it's called the peacemaker. <laughs> so, uh, but mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely uh, for anime, Dragon Ball Z, um, I mean, just so many. I mean, we've still just how old? I mean, we've been doing this since, uh, well, I've been doing this since probably like 2008, 09. So just a ton. Uh, Final mm -hmm. Fantasy, that just came to mind. Uh, I use a lot of aspects from uh, from those mm -hmm. games and uh, even some of the movies as well, too. So just a ton. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, long, long answer short, yeah, absolutely. This is from our very own Tvaria Sailor Peace, the voice of Maya Lockhart. Okay. She says, What inspired you to start this series? And did you originally plan to have it last for this long? So it's pretty funny, and I still remember uh, what happened when I first decided to actually make the series. Is Me and Manny at the time, my old friend Manny, were playing a lot of uh, Left 4 Dead, just making a lot of Left 4 Dead videos, just having lots of fun messing around in them. And we played it so much that we just got tired of it and we just kind of wanted to move on to a different game and play that a lot more. So eventually GTA 4 came out and we started playing that a ton. 
And then as we eventually started playing online quite a bit, we just were kind of missing Left 4 Dead a bit. So we played Left 4 Dead a bit more and then we would switch back to DTA 4, like back and forth. And then eventually I'd be like, you know, wouldn't it be funny if we just made like videos about like there being like a zombie outbreak in GTA 4, that'd be kind of funny. And the minute was like, yeah, we should definitely do that. That sounds fun. So we just decided to go ahead and just make it just for the hell of it. Um, I didn't think anything of it at the time. I just figured let's just make them for fun for shits and giggles because why not? But did I have it playing to last this long? Absolutely fucking not. My original, uh -huh. my original idea was it was just going to be like five episode longs and that will be it. It was just a silly gag. But I got so much positive feedback from it and so many people were telling me how much they liked it and they wanted me to keep going. It really threw me off guard and they were just getting a ton of views and ton of good feedback. And I was like, what the hell? This is crazy. So ultimately what I started to do was put more effort into it. I started to edit them a lot more, adding in music and transitions from different scenes, et cetera, et cetera. And so the series ended up being 10 episodes long and I was like, okay, that's it. Uh, pat myself on the back. That was pretty fun while it lasted. But people were like, keep going, make a series two. No, 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 make a series three. You gotta make one in GTA five. This is too good. Mm -hmm. So long story short, absolutely not. With Series 2 especially back in GTA 4, it was particularly difficult because with your plan of just kind of ending it with Series 1, Episode 10, you deliberately in, in put, put a part of the story in where the New York mm -hmm. got nuked. And there was like, no, there wasn't really a way around that. And it, that's kind of another funny part of is when I met, because I that's how I first got in contact with Josh as, as a fan watching the show. I, I messaged him over YouTube and suggested the idea for the Gene Bomb which then allowed him to birth season two. And, and then I came in as Carter as well. So basically, no, nothing nothing was intended to go on <laughs> as long as it as it has. It just kind of did. And, so. Yeah, and I saw that idea and I thought that that was like very interesting, a very unique idea. Um, he kept, you know, he was very simple about it. And he was like, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but there's this idea. And of course he took it from the Sonic games of no doubt there. Cause Colin is the biggest Sonic mm -hmm. fan on earth, but, <laughs> but he's like, yeah, there's this idea about this gene bomb where it just takes out bio organic things, not actually destroying, you know, the structure of things like the buildings and whatnot will be intact. I was like, that is a really good idea, actually. Let's just incorporate that. Because when people were asking me to continue the series, I was like, how? New York is ashes. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. yeah, with, with his idea, it made perfect yep. sense. And uh, I went with it. It worked. And we were able to, you know, continue the story that way. I honestly think that if Colin hadn't had sent me that message, then would I have continued the story still? I'm not sure. And if I would have, it wouldn't be the same story it is now i feel like that the characters would be a lot older mm. because i feel like what would have to happen is you know new york city would have to be completely rebuilt you know because there'd be nothing left so i feel like the only way it would make sense is if it was completely rebuilt and people started to move back in into the city but if you think about that in terms of how huge new york is that would take years and years and years and years and years so i yeah. really just had a really hard time figuring out how that could work so I honestly don't know if it could have kept going. I mean, the only other way you could have continued it, the only other way you could have continued is if, if it was a prequel or something, you know, because New York would still be there. That's another way maybe it could have continued. Or a spinoff, like a side yeah. story. Like we have uh, different characters. Or a spinoff, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but our next oh, question. All kinds of ways it could have gone. <laughs> yeah. We got, we, got quite a, we got quite a few questions to go through, so we're just going to kind of get these many of these as we can mm -hmm. next one i got is from uh, apex pred 8 or says hello there i love this series so far and how much it has improved over the years i do have a couple of questions though do you and your crew who work on this series plan on continuing it for as long as you can despite how the busy the rest of you must be in your lives and will this possibly be the last series for the story so very good question and first of all thank you very much for that feedback i really do appreciate it we do this for you guys you know this positive feedback this keeps us going and you guys are the reason why we continue on with this without you guys this series wouldn't exist period uh but to answer your question is uh do we continue to make it for as long as we can despite how busy we are well we are well, our plan right now just right now is to mainly focus on revelations that's our primary focus and that's what we have our 
uh, focus on 100% is Revelations. In terms of is it going to be the last series for the story? Yes. So this is absolutely the conclusion of the Zombie Attack Saga. So despite how amazing GTA 6 may be, I'm sure when it comes out, this story that we're working on right now, it's ending in Revelation. That's why it's called Zombie Attack Revelations. There's not going to be a sequel to this. This is the final chapter for each character that you guys currently see. So, and I think that that's really a good thing because I think if we just continue to make it, we'd just be milking it at that point. So I feel like if this is possibly the best conclusion that we can make for these characters i think you guys are going to really like it too the ending for this series will be bittersweet but i do think that it'll be satisfying for everybody so if anything and i've been thinking about it but if anything we will make future machinima series but it won't be directly impacted by these characters and what i mean by that is we'll probably make another series in gta 6 and it'll be in the same universe as the zombie attack universe, but yep. it'll be completely new characters it's not going to be just another zombie infection story not at all just something completely different and unique same universe because you know i think that'd be very interesting you hear about like gold tech or nepo in the background but they don't directly influence that story so hey Hey, may, maybe a, maybe a cameo or two from a from a ZAS character. <laughs> you just see like a random character walking down and like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> but, Bumps into someone on the way down the street. I'm sure Colin. Uh, like, oh, hey, watch it. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure uh, you you actually brought up the idea of um, eventually remaking the uh, the original ones. Do you want to explain that? Oh, it's just something that maybe down the road I'd like yeah. to to try and and do. Just just with the level of quality that can be done now in GTA V is unlike anything ever before. Mm -hmm. I just think that the original series one through three of GTA IV deserves um, a revitalization. So if that's something that can be done down the road, further down the road, then absolutely something there. We'll look into is it something we're gonna so. promise absolutely not but i will say this is we're gonna put our heart and soul into revelations and it is the absolute final chapter for all these characters and for this story in general so i think that that's a good thing and mm -hmm. i can't wait to show you guys the rest of the story i'm really excited about it i think you guys are gonna love it all right so uh next question right. colin on to the next question <laughs> um <coughs> excuse i don't know me. what that was this is from og I, I, neither do I. Uh, this is from OG Dante, aka Edgy, and he says, "What is your, what is you guys' favorite episode, and which one do you hate the most?" Very good question, Dante. Very, very good question. So, my favorite episode. I'm not going to say what my favorite episode is that we've written so far because you've pretty much written the whole story. So, I'm going to answer this in the sense of what's our favorite episode that's been uploaded so far. Personally, mm -hmm. my favorite episode so far out of all of the episodes you made in Zombie Attack is actually the most recent one. So, uh, Revelations Episode 4. Just because there's a mm -hmm. lot of new things that happen in it, and there's a lot of really good action scenes in my opinion. You have James taking on the Omega in that badass fight scene. You have, uh, you know, the incendiary zombie and all that shit happening with it, and there's a lot of suspenseful there. Um, you have Xander returning and then Vance dying at the end. Like, un we, we kind of saw that he was dying, but I felt that he died in a very unexpected way. And a lot of people agree is they knew he was going to die, just not in that way. And they thought that was very shocking. And a lot of people told me that the ending of, of Episode 4 is actually their favorite just because it's so powerful and it just kind of, like, is gut-wrenching. It just caught them off guard. And that's what I was going for. But... Mm. And the writing for episode four, I feel, is very well, too. There's a lot of exposition there. Gordon is explaining, you know, about the Peacemaker suits, and there's a lot of science in the, that's involved with that. And there's also where, you know, you have the beginning scene where they go to the Mediterranean. It really expands the world in a way. There's just a lot going on, really, in episode four. And there's never, in my opinion, a dull moment. It just keeps moving. So that's my favorite episode. My least favorite episode out of all the series, and I think Colin already knows the answer to this, but it would have to be series one, episode two, mainly because everything that went with filming that episode did not go according to plan. To be fair, in my defense, is again, like I mentioned earlier, is 
I really just made the first series, of course, the first five episodes just out of shits and giggles. I was just kind of like having fun along the way. But the reason why I really don't like that episode is just because the amount of fucking background noise that's happening. Basically, <laughs> apparently, someone's making food in the in the whole background of New York, the whole of New York. I shit you not, is my friend was over and he was cooking popcorn in the background. And I, I, I wanted to tell him to stop. I was in the middle of filming and I just didn't want to interrupt anything. But he was legit cooking fucking popcorn in the background. And he was also making dinner for something else. And he was like cooking with all these pots. I don't remember what he was making exactly, but it was just very loud and obnoxious. And you just, I I kind of play it off like, oh, it's it's all the, uh, the gunfire and shit happening in the city. But it, it sounds like fucking food being cooked. So, and... <laughs> Every popcorn popping is a gunshot. And it, it's a, it's, <laughs> That's I great. mean, really not much, it, not much happens in it. I mean, really, it just starts out, they're in the warehouse, we're like, we have to go get more food and supplies, but hey, we should go we'll see if our friend's still alive, and they go there. Nope, he's dead, and so is his brother. Well, that sucks. Let's just go back to our warehouse. That's all that happens. So, but, you know, in the long run, I use that specific story element that took place in that episode to be of really great significance later on because we figure that that's Trevor and his brother, Kurt, who becomes the most badass villain ever later on. But, yeah, see, the only really good thing in that episode is where uh, Josh and Manny see Trevor and Kurt dead. And by the way, just fun fact, I was never anticipating there to be two dead people there i just thought there was gonna be one so the fact that there's two people there is complete coincidence and just for this shows you how like i've decided to interpret the story later on just by random things that happen in series one so yeah those are my favorite and those are my least what, what about yours colin i'm actually pretty interested to see what you have to say i can't say i have a, a least favorite episode from uh from I actually to be to be honest one of the episodes that I never for some reason never really went a huge bundle on was actually season two episode was it two when they went to the bowling alley uh, I think that was no that was three was episode three? two they went to the hospital looking for Carter where, Carter's whereabouts episode three they went to the bowling alley I don't know why, but I that that episode. Uh, apart from, of course, what you just said, um, I, I don't have a lot of hated episodes, but um, that episode just again, I I didn't I don't think a lot happened in it really. It's kind of how you feel with series one, episode two. Um, just I think that that speaks for a lot of season, uh, series two in specific. It was sort of characters just going places through each episode. It's like, oh, yeah. let's go here. Let's go there. I know you don't particularly care for Series 2 specifically. I don't. <laughs> yeah, which is weird because I, I like it more towards the second half. Um, mm. But... When Carter yeah, like comes in. Up. <laughs> well, I mean, it shapes up later on. I, I still think I sounded terrible as Carter back then. But, um... No, I, for a favorite episode... It's like you it's like you said it. Any any of the ZAR episodes could be my favorite. Maybe hmm. maybe episode 3 because the Nepo HQ fight scene was pretty amazing. And mm -hmm. uh, the use of uh, some modding tools that allowed me to film that clip of the entire structure exploding and we got the incendiary mm. coming in and everything. It was just a really great awesome and the frantic and Ivan being a badass. There's a lot yeah, happening. Three for me. I mean it, it really yeah. felt like a huge fucking battle. Like you have the mm -hmm. you have our characters in kind of two separate locations and they're both you know they're both fighting and they're both like close to dying. There's just a lot mm -hmm. that goes on really. Yeah, and what's so. what's great is that's literally the tip of the iceberg for ZAR. It's gonna get just to see you know things are gonna get out of control later on. That's the it's tip so of the funny. iceberg. People People are like, it, there's no way shit's gonna hit the fan even more. Nepo HQ is gone, the president's gone, uh, their safe house in episode 4 is burned down. Where do you go from here? Trust me guys, it's not gonna get much easier on these characters. <laughs> mm -hmm. shit's, shit's gonna get harder for them. Um, but I, I do want to uh, quickly bring up, um, when you mentioned I don't really care for series 2. So... I can't really like go back and just watch series two because I'm one of those directors where if I look back on previous work, I feel like 
man, I wish I could just redo that because where I'm at now, I could just really improve this. But the way I made it back then, it just felt like I really didn't know what I was doing and blah, blah, blah. The reason why I really don't care for Series 2 is I regretfully wanted to make the series action-oriented. I remember telling you about that, which is not a good idea because I focus less on the story and just more on action. That's kind of why it really doesn't feel like like you said, there's a really a whole lot going on until it really picks up about halfway in the series. So that's kind of why I'm like, eh, it could have been done a lot better. And then, so it is what it is. Series 3 it really picks up, and then I think the uh, the episode has just gotten better and better as they go on. And, you know, I'll be saying, uh, I'll be giving different opinions the the, uh, the more episodes of your latest revelation. They're going to have a new favorite, so. But as of right now... Episode 4 is my favorite, and my least favorite is the episode with all the popcorn in the background. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's great, that's great. The next question comes from MostWishes04. Do you guys ever plan on finishing Alpha Protocol, or is that permanently cancelled? A very good question. It is something that we absolutely have the capability of finishing. Uh, now that we have all these new uh, tools and resources at our disposal, so my answer to that is maybe i know maybe. more than likely yeah. if it is going to be completed it's probably going to be finished by colin so that's entirely mm. uh by him if he wants to finish it so totally up to him uh right now we're focusing on revelations but we'll see about alpha protocol i mean what, what do you think colin I, I mean maybe like you said i the only problem i face is that a lot of what was originally intended for alpha protocol story is now coming into CAR for the Alex character. So it's almost like Alpha Protocol would be kind of redundant at this point, which, you know, that that's the only problem I can see, really, is, is I'd have mm. to come up with something new for than what was originally intended. So maybe, maybe, guys. That yeah, makes sense. Uh, this one is from Anonymous. Uh, he says, If you could have the characters in ZAR visit any other place on Earth, where would you pick? Very, very interesting question, and... Since we wrote the characters, it's kind of like it's kind of hard to think about. Um, but I can say is most of them, if there were no like stakes going on, like if there was no like crazy infection going on, I imagine most of them would probably just be in Los Angeles. Um, so I guess I'll just try to name off each character and say where they will probably be. So I can imagine James and Mai will probably still be in Los Angeles, given if they were still the uh, leaders of Nepo. I think they would just stay there because that's kind of where Nepo headquarters is, so a lot of their uh, main operations would be taking place there. So I feel like they'd probably just remain there. And uh, as for Jake, definitely not in Los Angeles. I feel like he'd just be somewhere secluded, somewhere peaceful, just somewhere you know that's, that's very tranquil. And he'd probably be with Charlene, just somewhere that's, uh, you know, nice and peaceful and quiet. Probably somewhere by a beach. Specifically, probably not in the United States. Probably, uh, probably like in Greece or something. So probably, mm. probably just like a peaceful uh, area in Europe. As for Gordon, he most likely would remain in uh, Los Angeles. Although actually, probably not if you think about it, because... Eli did pass away near Los Angeles, so I feel like Gordon probably wouldn't want to be anywhere near Los Angeles now that I think about it. I imagine Gordon would probably either be in uh, New York or probably just somewhere else where there's a lot of uh, tools at his disposal where he can continue like a lot of his uh, medical research and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yvonne, I imagine, would probably be helping out, like, military forces in the Middle East, most likely. He would probably return to uh, his home country, Yemen, to uh, kind of help out his uh, local village and things. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, just try to protect them and stuff. So he most likely would be there. And um, for as for Alex, I have no idea. Because I'm not even sure Alex really cares where he goes. <laughs> True, yeah, he doesn't care. <laughs> He doesn't. He he just just a bar. Oh yeah, let's uh, let's talk about now that I mentioned the word bar. Where would Justin be? Justin would probably be at the, probably at some pub in London getting shit faced, <laughs> mm -hmm. and then blacking out and then waking up in a completely different location, most likely. Uh, yeah. As for Manny, Manny would probably just be having a normal life. Like he'd probably just be settling down in Chicago with his family and, and things. 
Uh, Colin, since Carter is uh, your character, where, where do you think he'd be up to? I imagine that he... I don't know, honestly. I, I can't off the top of my head think. I imagine maybe he'd just kind of go soul-searching. Like, he'd go traveling, you know? To... To kind of, like, find his place in the world a little bit better. He might just go from place to place at random. Kind of like Alex, in a way, and that's probably more related to serum users in general. He'd probably just go on a... A bit of a travel, really. You know what I mean? He'd, not having a full purpose anymore. So, yeah. Okay. No, no place in specific. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So, next question mm. uh, that I received. So, this uh, pr user is Caliber of Time 5, and he asked me, Can you guys explain in more detail the plot regarding the flashback in Red Dead Redemption? I know it was also went over briefly in uh, Dummy Attack Series Armageddon, Zombie Attack Series 3 Armageddon, as well as Zombie Attack Origins, but I was wondering what kind of significance it has in the current plot, if any. Very good question, because it was actually briefly went over in Series 3 episode... What was it? Episode 5? Maybe? Yeah, or episode five. 6? Yeah, episode 5. It, it was kind of just randomly brought up by Carter, but <laughs> essentially what it is, is it's basically... It was just kind of explaining how procassium isn't something that's new it's something that's been worked on for a vastly long time it's something that's just been existing since like the early 1900s i mean what it was is there was this scientist who you know just wanted to improve people's health he wanted to in improve people's uh, life expectancies and what have you so really it's just showing that the Procassium itself has been along for a really long time. It's not just something new. And later on, it's it's kind of why a modern company wanted to kind of continue that work to try to complete it because they liked the idea. And essentially, that flashback in uh, series three is just these two characters that are caught in the middle of it when it briefly goes wrong. So after it briefly goes wrong because they fight off those infected, then they decide to just can the project completely. I know it went over briefly in uh, Origins, Colin. I feel like you could explain it a bit more with those uh, Red Dead Redemption flashbacks that happened then. Uh, I mean, the basic the basic summary is of the the purpose of the flashbacks in in terms of story was that these two brothers, who were, in essence, supposed to be like a substitute Jake and Carter, who I believe were called... What were they called again? I, I can't remember. I, one was called Evan, wasn't he? Jeff. Yeah, Jeff and Evan. Jeff and Evan, um, yeah. And, uh, uh, American uh, Western accents. The, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I still, oh, that I was I kind off. of like cringe a bit when I can't go back and watch Yeah. Um, but the, the basic purpose of it was to showcase what these two were, were experiencing around the time, a similar kind of... It, uh, occurrence happened back in those years um, to do with Dr. Adrian Gold, which is the the chemist you mentioned who was trying to create like a, a vaccine for various illnesses. The original Procassium, basically. I'm not mm -hmm. sure how much of that particular flashback, personally, I'm not sure, I haven't spoken with you about this even, Josh, but I, I'm not sure how much of that flashback scenario is even canon at this point or is it if, if it if it could be retconned because we recently released the ZASNR serum guide which by the way guys go check it out on the uh, on the facebook uh the official ZAR facebook um and in that it mentions uh sometime in in the early 1800s the project being well dr adrian gold in the in just turn of the 19th uh, well 20th century that would have been around the time he would have started his work. So, do you think that flashback could have still those events could have still happened maybe afterwards as well in the early 1900s? Yeah, essentially how it goes is uh, so that 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 picture you have, I'll try to post it in this uh, in this video. You guys might see it on screen. Mm -hmm. uh, but essentially, mm -hmm. 
it is basically like this serum. It, long story short, I'm not going to read off the whole thing because it's very detailed mm. and it's very well written. But essentially, mm. it's basically this serum that... You know, it, it's like this ingredient that science discovered in this flower in the early 1800s, mm -hmm. which ultimately later on was found by Adrian Gould. And then all this shit happens in uh, those Red Dead Redemption flashbacks. So in terms of that... In terms of how it's going to affect revelations i'm not going to say you know how specifically it's going to affect revelations because i'd be spoiling it however i will say this the riddled redemption flashbacks i am actually very happy this person brought them up because they are something that is absolutely going to be addressed in revelations and there is a specific plot element that's going to happen later on in revelations uh, towards the finale which greatly is um, a cause of what happened in the early 1900s. So it's kind of cool to see how, despite how how long ago something was, it's still affecting events, you know, much much later on. So it is something that's absolutely going to be addressed. So don't you worry. <laughs> mm -hmm. This one is from Gen Generation. Uh, would you take a Procassium serum if you could in real life? Interesting question. I actually, I actually did think about this. It, it, it depends on which serum you're talking about, because there are more than one type of potassium mm -hmm. serums. In terms of just turning into an infected, no, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> absolutely no. not. <laughs> In terms of turning into an enhanced, you know, I feel like because yeah, you get enhanced strength and you're pretty much immortal. But I feel like it'd be something that would be kind of nice to have at first, but in the long run, absolutely not. Because look at it this way, you really can't be caught yourself being completely underwater and you can't really reproduce anymore. It's not possible for you to have children. So for those of you that want to have children, it's not going to be possible. So yeah, you would have, you know, greatly increased intelligence and strength. But there's also, you know, a lot of downsides, like I mentioned, where you'd be, if you're completely succumbed in water, you're basically done for because uh, enhanced users... Pretty much it's impossible for them to swim. Not only that, but serum users can are actually the greatest causes of outbreaks. You know, they infect other people. So I feel like if I were to mistakenly get someone else infected, then I would never forgive myself for that. So essentially, mm. no. I feel like it'd be something that'd be kind of nice to have at first. Like, yeah, well, look how strong I am and I'm really fast and really smart. But I feel like in the long run, it would really not be good yeah i guess so fuck it i'd, I'd, I'd do it <laughs> <laughs> i don't mind living forever and shit I, I i've said this before and like to people have people have said to me like after watching a, like a, a movie with vampires in it or something and they'd be like oh would you be a vampire and i'm like yeah and they're like yeah but you'd live forever and shit. you'd see everyone die around you and i'm like i don't care <laughs> forever <laughs> be great you'd stay the same age and, and you could have all the young ladies you wanted for as long for eternity doesn't matter if they get infected afterwards you know, it's a shame it's, that's the way the cookie crumbles but you know oh my goodness <laughs> all right so the next user dominic asks us could a volcano kill a serum user if not that then what about the vacuum of space so very interesting and i actually I've been thinking about this quite a bit. So could a volcano kill a serum user? I feel like it, it depends on the level of strength that, that, that that serum user has. I feel like if it was someone like Arson, Kurt, Carter, perhaps Alex, most likely I would feel like it would definitely injure them. And if they were you know, completely encased in lava, then they're pretty much done for. I feel like in, in this, if, if trying to compare it to and how, how would it feel to a normal human, I feel like if a normal human caught on fire, it would feel like that to a serum user, like succumbed in lava, essentially, to make that comparison. Yeah. So it hurts like a bitch, but if you get out of it pretty quick, should be fine. Uh, vacuum mm -hmm. of space, so here's the funny thing. Serum users don't need air to survive. They don't. They don't? That's true. They, That's true. They but don't. I present... I present a secondary problem with that, right? It may it may be true that serum users do not need air to survive, but the liquid in their body, any liquid at all, would be automatically frozen in the vacuum of space, so they would be 
unable to die. Exactly. But frozen and unable to move and just float through space forever. Exactly. So Which there... would, if you think about it, that's the worst way to go. You know, yeah. being in space, unable to die. Wow. Because if you think about it, it's actually more beneficial being a regular human and dying in space than a serum user. Because if you're just mm -hmm. a regular human, you're pretty much dead in space in like five seconds. But as a mm -hmm. serum user, it'd be like torture because your mm -hmm. internal organs are slowly like being frozen away, literally. A mm -hmm. human, you're pretty much just done for like almost immediately. So I feel like it would suck you in more to be a serum user. <laughs> yep. Damn. Hey, Shame. maybe they'd get lucky and drift into the sun accidentally. That'd be a, that'd be okay. <laughs> hey, hey, there's mods in uh, in, in the in the GTA now, so maybe we could have a random serum user float in outer space and see what happens. You never know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Better note that one down. <laughs> yeah, write that down, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this one is from Zach Eleven, and he said, "Hi, love the ZAR series so far. Uh, my question: What's the development cycle of each ZAR episode?" So, this actually is kind of a long answer, so bear with me, I'll try to go over it in brief. And uh, Colin will add a bit more to it, but... What it is, basically, before ZAR started, before any series really started, is we plan out the series in full. We kind of go over in brief what's going to happen in each episode. We give a brief summary of what should happen, and how it impacts the rest of the plot and everything. So we write out the whole series, so that way we kind of know what we're getting into. And then for each episode, we completely write out the script for it. So I'll write out like a first draft, like I'll write out a basis of what should happen. And what Colin does is he'll add more detail to it. We'll both review it, make sure it makes sense. There's no plot holes or anything. Is there anything we should take out, keep in, etc. And then once the script is done, we send it out to our voice actors and they send us their lines. And then while that's being done, then we start to actually begin filming. Uh, this is one of the hardest parts is finding a good scheduled time to start filming I have to reach out to uh, a lot of my other friends and make sure that we're all available at that same time for filming And then try to knock out as many scenes as we can and then when mm -hmm. that's done eventually what I'll do with that footage I have recorded is go into the Rockstar editor and start you know making changes to the camera angles and everything and that can be very very Make a very very long consuming time. <laughs> Yeah. Very, 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 very consuming. That's the word I was looking for. So mm. once all the Rockstar editor shit's taken care of, I go ahead and record that, put it on my computer, and then with the footage I have on my computer, then I go on there, put in the lines, I uh, you know edit the scenes together, add in music and everything, and then the series gets made. Woohoo! Colin does mm -hmm. a little bit more on his side as well, but that's kind of like a generalization of... Uh, what I do, what, what, what kind yeah. of, what's usually your process, Colin? Well, mostly, like you stated, it, when when each episode is being developed, there's usually an original draft script that, that Josh himself works on, which is really useful for me, because I then go in and do the revision, uh, the revised script, I'll change certain wording here and there, like you said, make sure there's no plot holes, inconsistencies. Um, having the original document also really helps. Uh, a mm -hmm. lot of what you said about what is originally planned before the series even started, that gets changed around so much. We constantly add yeah. ideas for scenes all the time. <laughs> There's things we used to go, wow, that'd be amazing, let's add that in. But, and, mm -hmm. you know, we'll probably do a million more, but for the main part, one of my biggest roles with ZAR currently is, is the modded scenes, which, again, wasn't even a planned thing until episode two, but around the time I ended up getting GTA V on my, on my PC. And, uh, it, again, it's like you said when filming on, on console and such, it's it's a very time-consuming process, not just because of using Rockstar Editor and such, but just mm -hmm. using the mods for the scenes in general. You'd think that, that recording solo on your own, using the full capabilities of, of mod, the mod GTA, would make it easier. Somehow it doesn't. It takes a really <laughs> long time to record, like, two minutes of a modded scene and then edit that all together. Mm -hmm. And shit constantly goes wrong, you know, because I'm using NPCs, so, like, I'll be, I'll, like, hit go, and the NPC will just walk off a cliff or something, and I'm like, fuck, <laughs> and I have to, like, respawn him in, and, yeah, it just kind of, it, it, it's real uh, teeth grating, but when you put it all together, you get an awesome ZAR episode, so, that's Absolutely. the process. Mm -hmm. So, 
And yeah, essentially, it's it's very time consuming, uh, but we love it. But yeah, it's, it's definitely something that we're kind of used to at this point. Uh, most people, when I tell them the whole process we do, where it can take us up to at least a couple of months, people are like, man, I would never be able to do that. But for us, it's like no big deal, really, because I guess we're just so used to it. Yeah. Next question. Lol. <laughs> This comes from a user named Remy. This person asks, is there anything you wish you could change about the story? Things that maybe you don't like anymore? Uh, yeah, I would probably change the background popcorn noise. <laughs> For one thing. So, okay, all kidding aside, the, the actual story itself, things that I would change. So, specifically, I guess I'll just quickly go through uh, each series that we release and what I would change. Uh, in terms of series one, of course, I would get rid of a lot of the filler. It's a lot of like the stuff that kind of happens that doesn't impact the, the rest of the plot. And uh, with series two, of course, I would cut out a lot of those uh, action scenes. I really wish I could go back to series two and put more like a, you know, important story elements in there instead of just having action scene after action scene after action scene and just goes goes on and on and on. I feel like I would go back and put more story in there. Series 3, I would also get rid of some of the filler. There is some filler in Series 3 we get rid of. Like, for example, there's a scene that takes up, like, almost 10 minutes where the characters are just joking around, walking around, and, like, looking at new clothes. Like, mm -hmm. it is funny. It is funny to, like, have these characters, you know, interacting and messing around, but it doesn't really have any exposition, really. It's really just mm -hmm. a matter of characters messing around and joking and stuff. And for me, personally, looking back on it, it feels like... It, it makes the overall tone a bit more silly and not as like dark and you know heavy hitted as like it should be because series three out of series one through three is like the darkest and most story heavy of them so far so i feel like if we were to take a lot of the filler and just get straight to the point it'd be a lot more dramatic in that way before uh, before you go on can i actually ask you quickly was that clothes store scene did that happen right after they just found out that kurt was the villain that happened right after, literally, like, as soon as they escaped from the museum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love, I just love saying that out loud. It's kind of like, we gotta wait, I can't believe Kurt is, is behind all this. Anyway, let's go get new clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, guys, I know, I know Kurt is like, w there's a brand new villain that just revealed himself, and shit's saying the fan, this, the city's going to shit, but I absolutely have to get out of these dirty jeans. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Yeah, oh, you, know, you know, just we need a scene like, like that is, for ZAR. Yeah, it's, <laughs> we, we we need Bruno to come back and just be like, guys, I can't do this. I have to get a new shirt. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah. So it, it for legacies, I don't think I really changed much. Looking back on it, I'm I'm pretty fine with it. Um, although actually, I just realized for series three, this is one of the biggest things I would change. I would absolutely change how Arson was executed. So oh, yeah. originally yeah. for Arson is I was having I was planning on having him join the characters in the fight against Kurt. However, in the long run, I didn't really see how that would work in terms of, you know, filming it and stuff. So I didn't really know much what to do with them, so I decided that let's just have Carter kill him off. You know, let's have Carter take care of of uh you know arson himself and i feel like the fact that they just so happened to find like this really powerful bullet round in an mm -hmm. ambulance that just so happened to be strong enough to take out arson it's just kind of like you know a forced plot element thrown in there just a forced way to get rid of arson so that's something mm -hmm. i would absolutely redo that i kind of look back on and didn't really like the way it was done so if you could redo it would you would you have arson as one of the main characters like he would join them because that yeah. imagine that wow imagine that i wonder how the story as we know it now would be impacted if, if arson was originally with them as the, as the fifth member that'd be really interesting exactly huh. yeah and and uh so th that's something i would definitely change looking back on for legacies i just started thinking about it is i'm not really sure what the point of eris's character was other than to be like a rival for Keon. So, if I were to go back and change it, I would actually have Keon probably kill Eris in some way. That would make Keon like more of a threat in a way. 
what and for revelations really i don't really think i would change anything so far because i really like where the story is going and where it's headed so i know that sounds kind of like oh revelations i wouldn't change a thing no it's true i really don't think there's the problem with revelations that we've had so far and with what we have upcoming with it i think stuff is looking really good i'm actually curious uh, what, what what do you think Colin? what would you change if you had to say honestly you've pretty much covered a lot of what I, I would have said, like the arson comment, it was really surprising to me, but I, everything you've said is, is, I can't think of many changes that could be made. Um, uh, nah, nothing off the top of my head. No, you pretty much summed it up. Okay. So. Yeah, well, it's, a, it's a boring answer, but I, I can't think of anything. What we, it, what, I pretty I much just because what, we, what we've done is is so well established that it's hard for me to imagine it in any other way now you know so it's just so mm. difficult for me to imagine oh you know if we hadn't have done this or if we hadn't have done that so yeah i i don't know honestly might have to uh maybe answer that at a later date maybe <laughs> hey <laughs> zar director's commentary when when that eventually is here <laughs> <laughs> yeah fair enough Mm -hmm. All right, guys, well, we have uh, one last question to get through, so I'll let uh, Colin, uh, you go ahead and take this one. Okie dokie. Um, all right, this one is by Tabloid Extraction, and they say, Hello, just uh, gotta say I absolutely love everything you guys do. The progress you've made from the start is phenomenal, and the series is truly starting to feel cinematic. Thank you so much. My question is, do you guys have any tips or advice when it comes to making a machinima series? So firstly, thank you very much for that feedback, and that kind of feedback is the stuff we enjoy reading, and like I said, you guys are the reason why we do this, so I really do appreciate that feedback, that means a lot to us. So, in terms of making a machinima series, I would really just go back to uh, what we were talking about before, in terms of the development plan. It's best if you absolutely know what you're doing before you start actually filming it. Make sure you plan ahead on what you're actually going to be doing in terms of that. And the biggest advice I can give you is make sure that when you're working on videos, especially like these, is you have to be passionate about them. If you're not passionate, you're not going to care and the quality of the series is going to suffer because of it. So it's something you have to really be passionate about. And you also need to have a lot of patience for it. It's a lot of work. It's not easy. You are going to run in frustrations along the way. But if you're willing to accept that because you're passionate enough about it, then the overall quality of your machine is going to be a lot better because of it. So that's the biggest advice I can give is uh, plan it ahead. You know, like, like what we do is write a script for it. Make sure you know exactly what you're doing. And make sure that you're capable of creating these things. Like if you write something you really want to do, but you don't think you'll be able to film it, don't write it down and make it work in some other way. You know what I mean? Hmm. And that's overall pretty much the biggest advice I can give. What about hmm. you, Colin? I'd say if, if you're going to aim to make a high quality machinima, um, be prepared, possibly. Uh, depending on, like like Josh said, but if you have know what route you want to take and if you can't work it in some other way, always stay open-minded if you want to make something like the high quality that you that maybe spending a bit of money might be possible. You know, dare I say, me and Josh have done the same for, for Zombie Attack. Series, legacies, revelations, you know, sometimes actual money is spent, like, you know, on, on devices that will make a higher quality product. And secondly, if, if you you know, a full machinima is going to be voiced and such, be prepared to, you know, put up some kind of online casting call and find appropriate voice actors for the, for the character roles you want, depending on what kind of machinima you're making. Because it just means that the end uh, product will be a lot more professional, honestly. And that's, that's mm. the best advice I can give. Yeah. Good answer, man. Mm. Thank you. I can smile. Oh. That was so good. I love it. <laughs> Uh, you, you, you guys gotta check out Bruno's blog. Make sure you uh, check out his blog in the description below. Some of the shit that's posted on there is funny. Bruno is like the Deadpool of, uh, of the series. He's breaking the fourth wall and he's not technically mm -hmm. alive, but just like, it, it's just so funny. Just go, just go check out his blogs. It's hilarious. But <laughs> anyways, guys, thank you so much for throwing all these questions our way. We really do appreciate it. And 
Um, like I said, for those of you that did ask us a question, we didn't get a chance to answer. Don't feel discouraged. We still appreciate the, uh, all of you taking the time to send these send these to us. It was a lot of fun making this, and um, I hope this kind of explains a lot of things, clears the air for a lot of you. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of Revelations, because in my opinion, it's just going to get a lot better from here on out. Um, oh, yeah. Any uh, any final words, Mr. Colin? I'm just, I've had a really good time answering these questions. This is something I've always wanted to be able to do with Josh, you know, just go through people's various uh, questions that they have, and yeah, glad to have been here, and like Josh said, ZAR can only go up at this point, so stay tuned. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned for that, guys. As always, be sure to subscribe. Bye, guys. See ya.